Switzerland has a new president every year. This is not because the country is unstable, far from it. It is because the seven cabinet ministers who make up the Swiss government take it in turns to hold the country's presidency. The seven ministers each head a government department. Interior, defense, economics, finance, foreign affairs, justice and environment. The presidency is largely a ceremonial position held in addition to the department. The official annual government photo, the eighth person on the very right, is the federal chancellor who acts as the federal council's chief of staff and supports the federal councillors in the performance of their duties. Under the federal constitution, the federal council is a body in which every member has equal rights and obligations. It is based on collegial authority. Its decisions are reached behind closed doors and then presented with one voice. Its main function is to steer the political process. The cabinet ministers or federal councillors are elected by the federal assembly or parliament. The parliament is comprised of two chambers with equal powers, one representing the people, the national council, and one representing the cantons, the council of states. The cabinet ministers are elected for the duration of the parliament that chose them. The Swiss system of consensus democracy ensures that power is not concentrated into any one hand. Institutions are designed to represent cultural diversity and to include all major political parties in a coalition government. Re-election following parliamentary elections, which are held every four years, is usually a formality. And so elections to the Federal Council are held whenever a cabinet minister steps down. Except in 2003, the first time since 1872 that a cabinet minister was not re-elected. The magic formula died in 2003 with the breaking of a taboo when Federal Councillor Ruth Metzler was not re-elected as this didn't happen by consensus but by conflict. The result is that the magic formula is dead and the search is on for a new one. The magic formula? This was a gentleman's agreement which defined the Swiss government for more than four decades. The seats in the Federal Council were divided according to this formula, 2, 2, 2, 1, with two seats each for the Free Democrats, the Christian Democrats and the Social Democratic Party, and one seat for the right-wing Swiss People's Party. But as the right had fared well in the past two legislatures, the Swiss People's Party was granted a second seat at the expense of the Christian Democrats. Whether this signified an end to the magic formula is under debate. Historians have been at loggerheads over whether the magic formula referred to the specific formula that had held for four decades, or whether it simply refers to a representation in government arithmetically proportional to seats in Parliament. Things became yet more complicated with another non-re-election in 2007. The entrepreneur Christoph Blocher, who had controversially replaced federal councillor Ruth Metzler in 2003, was voted out. His Swiss People's Party colleague, Evelyn Wittmer-Schlumpf, was elected in his stead. She was felt by other parliamentarians to be a more widely accepted, less controversial candidate. The fact that she accepted the election caused a split in the Swiss People's Party. Supporters of Evelyn Wittmer-Schlumpf formed a new, more moderate party, the Conservative Democratic Party. While in theory any Swiss citizen can stand for the post, in practice the new councillor is chosen from a list put forward by the outgoing councillor's party. Efforts are made to ensure that all areas of the country are represented in any one government. In the run-up to the elections, intense political lobbying takes place. In Switzerland, the night before the elections to the Federal Council is referred to as the Night of the Long Knives, as it is here that last-minute deals are struck between political parties, and it is the last chance to convince parliamentarians of the merits of voting for one candidate rather than for another. The day of the Federal Council elections. At 8 a.m., the Speaker of the National Council opens the United Federal Assembly. 
First, the Federal Assembly bids farewell to the outgoing Federal Councillors. Then the voting begins. Sometimes there are as many as four rounds of voting. In September 2010, two new Federal Councillors were elected. Johann Schneider Amann of the center-right Free Democrats and Simonetta Sommaruga of the center-left Social Democrats. It was a historic moment as it meant that women now held four out of the seven seats. Switzerland, where women only gained the vote in 1971, became one of only few countries in the world with a female majority in government. Geschätzte Damen und Herren, je vous remercie du fond du cœur par Stein et la fiducia o di altra natura. Simonetta Sommaruga holds her acceptance speech in each of Switzerland's four national languages, German, French, Italian and Romanche, displaying yet another feature of Swiss politicians, their multilingualism. The new federal councillors do not necessarily take over their predecessors' departments. This is determined in the days and weeks following the vote by the federal council behind closed doors. Correspondents describe this process as Federal Burns' best-kept secret. The result often comes as a surprise, even to the best-informed political analysts. And the new federal councillors will have to wait their turn to take over the rotating presidency. When it is their turn, they may become president for more than just a year, as the federal council is currently debating the extension of the presidency to two years in the interests of greater continuity in international relations.